guys, Elliot here from Venom Films and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make objects float in HitFilm 4 Express. I won't waste too long on the introduction to this video as it's a, going to be quite a long tutorial as it is. So anyway, without further ado, let's begin. You're also going to make sure that your camera is locked down on a tripod otherwise it will move and it will ruin the effect. Also for the prop I just used an apple on a skewer. Right, so now we're in our editor, we're going to go to the project tab at the top and we're going to make sure our composition settings are in the right place and we're going to start the new composition. So once we've got the new composition, we're going to make sure you're on the compositing um, workspace. Go to media and now we're going to import our media. So once we've got the clean background plate, we're going to put the apple floating on the top or whatever object you want like that as you can see we have the object floating and we want that on at the top and this is the bottom plate so that's going to be the plain plate as well so once you've we're going to now cut your footage so it's the right length for the video and we're also going to make sure the floating apple or whatever object you want floating is going to be the same length as the footage otherwise it'll run over so i'm just going to choose that good bit that looks okay oh we're gonna there we go now they are the same size so now what we're going to do is go to the sidebar here and click on the one that looks like the pen tool and you're going to scroll in with the mouse and then you're going to make sure the top layer is selected and you're now going to go around the apple and you start a new mask when you click. Now this doesn't have to be too accurate but um, it can take quite a while so you want it too accurate. <laughs> so I'm just going to go around. This also is better if it is focus because then it makes it much easier but as you can see this isn't then that much focus but oh well. So now you can see once we've connected the circle it's actually floating which looks pretty cool and now what you're going to do is go on with the control left click right click arrow and that will look really cool and as you can see though the apple moves so we're going to want to move that keyframe with it and we're going to drop down the side menu and we're going to click on the circle next to the path which will add a new keyframe for all the different points now make sure that's added otherwise you'll have to do it all over again like i did and if you go down to the shape on the actual timeline you can see it's added a keyframe now we're going to move on one frame and move them all up a bit so you can see it and as you can see it's now added another keyframe for the object as it's moved and you want to make sure the stick is the closest bit the, the mask around the stick is going to be the closest as that's the bit that needs to be the most accurate or because otherwise or, or you also need to make it un make sure it's not accurate if you make sure it's very accurate if you have um uneven lighting as well so now we've done it once we're going to press the control again and as you can see as a keyframe now I'm going to speed this up as this might get a bit boring so I shall see you once I have completed the mask. Right, I am back and I have finished masking. It took about 10 minutes, so not too long, but as you can see, I have all the keyframes along the bottom. And now if we go back out and we look at our footage now, you'll see that it is very cool. Oh, if we just zoom out back to percent and just, yes, deselect that mask. You can see now it looks very cool and realistic. And they said again, it didn't take very long as well. Oops, sorry. 
Now what we're going to just do is add a bit of colour grading onto this and some bars. So once you've done that, all you need to do is export it and enjoy.